Hello all you real estate enthusiasts out there. Today is April the 25th, just past midnight here in downtown Toronto. As always, we'll be going over the downtown condo market numbers and also the current events for this week. In the news, I saw talks of a new law that's going to try to eliminate blind bidding. Also, a potential 0.75% rate hike coming. So we'll discuss how this will potentially affect the market at the end of the video. Also, we're going to be talking about an question, excellent question I received from one of my viewers at the end of the video. And also, I created two new graphs for you guys. So stick around to the end, like and subscribe to these videos to stay on top of the market and to learn about the real estate market together. Just as a quick disclaimer that everything I talk about on all my videos should not be taken as investment, legal, or tax advice. Although I do have knowledge and understanding on these topics, never take my words as advice, only as opinions. Speak to your financial advisors, lawyers, and accountants to protect yourself on and get more information on those topics. Now that I got that out of the way, just wanted to introduce myself to those watching for the first time to understand who I am and what is the purpose of me making this channel. So I've been in real estate for about 20 years now. I graduated from UBC with a degree in real estate, which doesn't really mean much because I really didn't take advantage of the opportunities I was presented with as I wasn't, how can we say, the most studious of students. People who knew me from back then know what's up. However, uh, luckily I didn't stay that way and I did actually end up learning many things and it has given me a foundation to do what I do today. So I'm extremely grateful for the luck that I was blessed with because it was a total fluke that I even got into the program in the first place. Um, and I made, that sh I, mean, I made that share that story with you guys one day. So I moved to Toronto in 2010. I had to start uh, from scratch in a brand new city. Luckily, I knew how to hunt and survive, so I did. This gave me the unique opportunity to start my real estate career twice in one lifetime, as if once wasn't enough. Fast forward today, and I have an incredible team of people working with me and my business partner, Sunny Ball. We consistently are ranked as one of the top REMAX teams in the country and the world, which doesn't really matter much, but to real estate agents, However, it proves that we've been around the block and my final note on this is that it takes an incredible team to achieve this. So all the credit goes to the team and my business partner because everything wouldn't have been possible without the teamwork that we have. For me, I am only one man who has this obsession over real estate as I feel this is my calling. I literally eat, breathe and sleep real estate every single day. However, it is impossible that I can know everything nor will I pretend to because once you go down the real estate rabbit hole, for those who have gone down the hole, you realize that there are just too many variables at play. So there is really no way you can actually learn about everything there is to learn about this industry in one lifetime. And forget about predicting the future of the market because, you know, which many people try to do. Trust me, I've failed many, many times. So learning from my mistakes and limitations, I don't try to do this anymore. Rather, I try to understand the mechanisms at work learn from my mistakes and successes, and most importantly, I try to learn from as many people as possible. Therefore, I created this channel, the reason why I'm doing this, and as a collective uh, and a community, perhaps we can unlock the understandings um, in a non-biased and more productive way. I don't care if you use me or my team as an agent or not, this is not what I'm here for. If you do, thank you, and we do appreciate your business, and we'll give you the best service possible. However, this is not the point of this channel. I want to include everyone in this conversation about real estate and to exchange ideas that will help everyone grow. Now let's get down to the numbers. So let's take a look at the active downtown condo sale listings, resale listings. So if you look at the graph, we've actually gone to 1,042 active listings. This has gone up from the previous week, so the trend is still going upwards where we're seeing inventory building. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this unfolds over the coming weeks and months because of the interest rate changes and we can actually look back and see how that, uh, you know, these interest rate hikes made any changes to the market, if at all. Uh, the new graph that I told you guys about earlier this is a new graph. So basically what this graph shows is the change from the week to week numbers of inventory. So if it's above this line, the zero line, there's been a surplus of inventory. Uh, if it goes below the, the line, there's been uh, 
a, a deficit of inventory, so inventory is dropping. So if you actually look, you know, during the COVID uh, situation, we did see a huge buildup of inventory. That's what kind of built this mountain, uh, continuous buildup of inventory. Uh, and then this is what dropped that this, this steep slope on the side of the mountain is this here where inventory is actually disappearing. So right now we're actually in this phase here. And last week there were actually 94 new active listings that were put on the downtown condo market. So there's a surplus of 94 listings. If this continues, uh, again, you know, we're going to start seeing changes to the market, especially in pricing. So let's take a look at the actual number of condo unit sales so far for the month of April. We're at 398. I think I said in a previous video that uh, maybe earlier on that we've probably suspected it to get closer to 700. I don't know if that's going to happen now. Again, was this the effect of the interest rate hikes? Or is it just because we had a really good, busy, you know, early start to the year, so we've kind of already seen our spring, our spring market? Again, that's yet to be seen. But again, we're 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 falling behind on the numbers here. We're only at 398, and we're in the we're almost at the end of April now. You know, keep in mind that all the numbers haven't been reported because anything sold conditional hasn't been reported sold yet. So this number will definitely go up, but by how much we'll we'll have to see. The actual average downtown condo prices, it looks like it's coming down. So we're at 869,000. But again, you know that I'm not a huge fan of the average sales price. So let's take a look at the HPI index. The home price index is the same as last week. It hasn't changed from the previous week because this number doesn't change um, every week. It only changes every month. So we'll be able to see what the new numbers are in May. Now let's take a look at the downtown condo median sale price. So as you can see, it has gone down slightly. Uh, it's been relatively flat, so 780, 775 is where we're at right now for the median downtown condo sales price. If you look at the list price sales price ratio, you can see that it's coming down faster. It's still at 107%. I think last week it was at 108%, but this number is starting to come down. So you're seeing less and less multiple offers. So in the strategy that, you know, the strategy that we're taking in this market right now is we're trying to price closer to where we want to be at instead of trying to hold back for bidding wars. But uh, that will definitely start bringing down the, the list price sales price ratio as more agents start to do this. But that's kind of the trend. That's kind of what we are starting to do at our brokerage. Days on market for April, we're at 11 days still. So that's relatively excellent in terms of uh, the speed of which condos are selling. So things are still sh selling relatively quickly. I haven't looked at the actual data for the recent um, days, but um, on average, we still at 11 days on market, which is still a very, very low number. Now let's take a look at the rental market in downtown. So. As discussed the previous week, we see the trend going downwards. Right now we're at 1495 active listings. So just like I created the um, changes for the sales, resale inventory, we've done the same for the uh, rental inventory as well. And as you can see, we're at a negative number right now. We actually lost 113 listings uh, compared to the previous week. So the trend is trending downwards. If you're actually wondering what this number here is, I was actually wondering the same thing too and I tried to figure it out. It looks like that um, at the end of 2020, uh, because this is January the 1st when I actually record this number, we saw a lot of listings expiring. Uh, at that time, you know, we were at, you know, a huge, you know, buildup of inventory for the rental market. So when, you know, January 1st hit, you know, all of those listings expired. And most of the time, the listings are state, like expired for the, like at the end of the month, um, at the end of the year. So that's what happened here. That's why we saw this huge drop in inventory um, on, the, on January 1st, 2021. The actual number of units that were leased for April so far, we're at 1422 units that were leased in April so far, uh, which is a, a phenomenal number. If you compare it to 2019 before COVID, 
we were at 1331 so we're definitely beating that number this month we'll probably end up closer to about 1600 uh, units that were leased in downtown for April the actual average prices are starting to climb up uh, as I predicted uh, as, we, as we see the inventory drop we're gonna see the average prices go up right now we're at 2537 as the average price of a downtown condo rental and also the uh, medium price is now holding at twenty three hundred dollars uh, so that trend should the medium price should start going up as inventory starts to drop as well if you actually look at the list price rent price ratio now it's at uh, slightly over a hundred percent I think um, the previous week it was a slightly lower than this but uh, the trend is going upwards which means that you know some rental listings are going for more than asking right now and if you actually look at the days on market it's starting to fall as well so right now in April it takes about 19 days to rent out your condo now let's break down the actual sales numbers here so for a studio it's going for about 540 right now a one bedroom is going just under 700,000 a one bedroom den is going for about 770 if you're looking at a two bed uh, it's about just over a million dollars and two bedroom plus dens are about 1.2 million but again this fluctuation again that's the thing with outliers and average just the fluctuations and the outliers uh, they, they sway the numbers too much especially if your sample size isn't that big which in this case we only have 46 uh, you know data points to to use for this number now let's take a look at the rental numbers so studios are going for um, 1786 uh, one bedrooms are going for over 2100 now 2134 one bedroom and dens going for about 2367 two bedrooms are going for about 2980 just under three grand and two bedroom and dens are going for about thirty five hundred dollars and three bedrooms are going for about four thousand dollars a month in downtown let's talk about this article that I read in uh, CP24 basically Ontario to allow new home sales tactic that would change the bidding process if you read the uh, the, the first paragraph here the Ontario government is introduce, introducing a new real estate regulation that will allow home sellers to share bids on the property and disclose the details of competing offers. You know, as the system stands now, individuals looking to put an offer on a home do so blindly without knowing how much their competitors are offering above the asking price. The new regulation will give sellers to the option to opt for an offer, an open offer process. So, is this going to really do anything to cool down the market and you know bring some more transparency to the real estate market? Perhaps. But uh, in my opinion, you know, I was doing some thinking about this to do, you know, to strategize if I was a listing agent and, and my sellers wanted to do this. In some cases, I'll tell you, like, it's better for the seller if they do have an open bidding process because there be, might be two different buyers who are, um, you know, really want the property. And usually it, it ends up, you know, the offer process ends up ending sooner than, than, uh, than later. Uh, but if they kept an open bidding process, I, I've been in situations where the, the prices would have gone a lot higher than what they actually sold for. So, you know, if I was the agent, I would pick and choose based on the situation of the bidding war on which strategy to use. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to give us the option to change it midway through, but whatever is more advantageous to the seller definitely that's a strategy that we're going to be using so i don't know if this is really going to do anything it, it, it actually might even increase the prices in in some situations that i just described to you because many situations i'm in where you know there's two people that really want the property so that's my thoughts on that what do you think of what are, what are your thoughts uh, you know feel free to leave them in the comments below now let's turn our attention to the interest rates basically mccallum's who's like the uh, basically the Jerome Paul Powell of Canada so now let's discuss the actual interest rates because the interest rates are expected to go up by 75 basis points in the next meeting which is on the June the 1st so Bank of Canada is going to they hinted well Governor Tiff Macklem uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right but uh, he's the um, 
equivalent to Jerome Paul in the Federal Reserve, I believe. So he is basically saying that, uh, you know, everything's on the table right now. And people are interpreting that, uh, you know, he might raise by 75 basis points in the next meeting. Uh, after that announcement, basically uh, Desjardins, uh, which is a which is a, one of the banks, they uh, increased their forecast to this, you know that the right rates are going to go up by 0.75 percent. Um, I don't think it says here that uh, this hasn't happened since the late 1990s, so it's quite unprecedented that they're actually raising the rates this quickly. I'll put a link to the article uh, below. But uh, quick thoughts on this: if they increase the interest rates by 75 basis points, it's basically meaning that the variable rates are going to go up. The line of credits are going to go up. The home equity line of credits are going to go up. So, you know, it's going to overall increase the cost of overall Canadians. And anyone looking to get a variable rate is going to cost them more. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the banks actually start discounting um, the variable rates, you know, by giving you like a prime minus like 1% instead of like a prime minus 0.6%, which it currently is. But we'll have to wait and see how things change once these increases come into play, but definitely it will decrease the purchasing power of Canadians when it comes to buying real estate. So now I had this question, even with rates rising, market is strong. Does this mean that foreign capital inflows via immigrants is super strong and is able to counter the rate rises? So a couple of things here. Um, I don't personally believe that the immigrants are the cause of countering any rate rises. Um, it'll be again I would need to see the data to understand this more if anyone has it out there I'd love to to know and, and see the source of it but you know compare if I look at my business the amount of immigrants and people that are coming into Toronto that are actually buying real estate is quite low I, I would say the majority of the people that are like are buying and I would I would say at least like 98 97 percent of people that come into that are buying with us are locals and they're all local investors and they're all local buyers so saying that um, immigrants are coming in with all their money and you know with all this capital and just buying up all the real estate I don't really know how true that statement is and I believe that you know the government you know how they're putting this ban potentially for two years on immigrants buying anything you know in Canada and um, you know the increasing the foreign buyer tax from the provincial side of things to 20% those are just red herrings like you know just kind of things that the politicians are doing to show that they're doing something but won't really make that big of an impact uh, I think the problem is on the investor and the local buyer side, uh, not from the um, immigrant side. And you know, you got to think about yourself as a new immigrant. You know, maybe coming into a new city where you don't know anything, and then all of a sudden, you know, are you going to just go out and buy any the first place you see? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some people will, but if it was me, I'd probably want to rent for a year or two, kind of like do some research on the market and then kind of understand what I'm getting myself into before actually committing and paying this huge sum of money to buy my own place. So that argument that immigrants are coming in super strong and able to counter the interest rates, I'm not sure that's, that's going to happen. Um, what's going to counter the rising like interest rates is if supply drops and stays at an all-time low. If the supply of inventory starts to go up and increases, uh, then you know the prices will will fall, and you know that's kind of the phenomenon that raising rates rates should have on the market as it decreases the amount of demand and it increases the amount of supply. Uh, but uh, we will have to wait and see how things play out. So, again, to answer your question, uh, it's still early to to tell what's happening. In the market and if the interest rates will be countered uh, it's very really difficult to do but um, again there's a lot of arguments that uh, you know inflation is going to counter um, you know the potential drop in prices of the rising interest rates because 
you know, that, uh, you know, the value of money isn't going to be the same anymore. But again, it's uh, something that has to be seen before we actually know the answer to it uh, with many things. Like once we look back on what happened with the market, we'll be able to see and interpret like this is what happened. Right now we're kind of in the transition phase and, and going through it right now. So it's really difficult to say exactly what is going on. And honestly, the data is not there to, sh to, to, to analyze and research in detail for me to kind of answer this question specifically. But um, again, I'm just giving you from my experience and from my perspective that immigrants are not going to be a huge player in changing the market in downtown Toronto, especially. But um, you know that the investors and the local buyers are. So I hope that kind of helps answer your question and think about it the right way. Um, but uh, right now we're too early. You know this just started. So we're gonna have to wait a few months to see the actual impact of it. So stay tuned and we'll talk about this later when this, these changes take place. As always, thanks for watching my videos. If you, wanna, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll, I pretty much answer every single comment that I get. So I'll uh, definitely try to get back to you as soon as possible. And again, if you're not in the real estate game, it's probably one of the best things you could do for your life if done right and that's what we're trying to do here on this channel teach you guys and help you do it right thanks again and i'll see you guys in the next video